Different investments provide different types of income. Some income is passive, such as interest you earn on a savings account or distribution income that you receive from a mutual fund investment. Some income you earn is based on your own actions, such as buying a market-based investment at one price and then selling it later at a higher or a lower price. So as an individual investor, it's important for you to understand how different types of income are taxed because it will help you decide what account type is best for certain types of investments. So here are some different types of income. One common type of income is interest. So you can earn interest by having money in a savings account or a GIC. You can also earn interest by holding investments like mutual funds that invest in securities like bonds. All of the interest you earn is taxed at your marginal tax rate, just like employment income. So what that means is that if your marginal tax rate is 30%, and if you earn $100 in interest, you'll pay $30 in tax on that, leaving you with $70 earned after tax. Now, interest income is the highest taxed of all types of investment income, so it makes sense to hold interest-bearing investments in tax-free or tax-deferred accounts. Now, another type of income is capital gains. Capital gains can be earned in a couple of different ways. Number one, by receiving distributions from investments like mutual funds that themselves have capital gains. This capital gain income is then passed through to the unit holders of those mutual funds like you and me. The second way you can earn capital gains is by selling investments like mutual funds that you've made money on. So for example, you bought at $10 per unit and then later sold at $11 per unit. This would generate a capital gain of $1 per unit. Now as an investor, you're taxed on 50% of that capital gain. So again, if you made $100 in capital gain income, you're taxed on 50% of that, or in this case, $50. If your marginal tax rate was again 30%, it means that you'll pay 30% of $50 or $15, uh, leaving you with $85 after tax. So as you can see, capital gains income is much more tax efficient than interest income. Now the last type of income we'll discuss is dividends. So you can earn Canadian dividend income by holding individual securities like stocks, that pay distributions directly. You can also earn dividend income by holding investments like mutual funds that invest in companies that pay dividends. In both cases, dividend income is passive income, meaning that you didn't have to do anything. You didn't have to initiate a transaction in order to actually receive it. All you had to do was hold the security. Now, dividends are taxed in a different and slightly more complicated way than either interest or capital gain income. So to recap, all of the interest you earn is taxed, but only half your capital gain is taxed. Now, dividends, however, are taxed based on a number of factors that make it very specific to each individual investor. So here's what I mean. Dividends can be either eligible or non-eligible. They can be foreign as well. All three types are taxed differently. Now, two other factors that affect how dividends are taxed are number one, how much income you earn, and number two, which province you live in. So dividends benefit from a federal tax credit, but also a provincial tax credit, which has varying rates actually, depending on your province. So basically with dividends, there's a gross up factor to account for the tax that the company paying you the dividend already paid, and then the various tax credits I mentioned, which reduce how much tax you pay overall. So as you can probably tell, it's tough to generalize when it comes to tax implications of dividends. Now, in all cases, dividends are taxed more efficiently than interest income, and in some cases might even be taxed more favorably than capital gains. Often they're taxed somewhere between what you'd be taxed on interest and what you're taxed on capital gains. So because interest is the highest tax type of investment income, ideally it makes sense to hold interest-bearing investments in tax-free or tax-deferred accounts, such as TFSAs and RSPs. And if you have a good-sized portfolio of investments that are not held in registered accounts like TFSAs and RSPs, you'll benefit more from the tax treatment of dividends and capital gains than from interest income.